In today's section, in the Rambam, he talks about the mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem, sanctifying God's name. Uh, what I'm about to talk about is the fifth chapter of Hilchos Yisoy De Torah, the laws of the fundamental principles of Torah, in which the Rambam explains that there is a commandment to sanctify ourselves, to sanctify the name of God, even if it means at the expense of losing one's life. And we are prohibited from desecrating God's name. And if, how do we fulfill this mitzvah or how do we desecrate this mitzvah? So the Rambam says that if a guy comes along and tells you, uh, work on Shabbos, build me a house on Shabbos or else I'll kill you. Well, you build him a house on Shabbos and you, and you uh, violate the Sabbath. Um, if a person is so ill that they're going to die and they have to eat on Yom Kippur, you're obligated to eat on Yom Kippur and not die. Um, and, but the, the question that I had was, the Rambam is coming to tell us the mitzvah of sanctifying our, God's name, which indicates that we're willing to sacrifice our lives for the sake of God's name. and we will not desecrate God's name because we will stand up to whichever uh, tyrant tries, who tries to kill us uh, if we don't violate the Torah. That, that's, that's if we die in the process, if we sacrifice or are willing to sacrifice our lives in the process. That's sanctifying and that's not desecrating God's name. Where does the Rambam, uh, however, uh, get the idea that Kate said, how can you sanctify his name by not violating the Torah, by fulfilling the wishes of that goy in order not to cause your death. He says, how do we sanctify God's name? By doing the opposite of sanctifying God's name. We don't sanctify God's name by killing ourselves. We, san we, we, we don't. We just do what he tells us to do. How is this the explanation of sanctifying God's name? And so based upon that, I, I proposed that that's part of the sanctification process. Part of the sanctification process is that you're supposed to show that God's laws are reasonable. God's laws are, are meant to, uh, to keep us as a nation and to make sure that we, we will live as best as we can, and therefore that you do not kill yourself, you do not die uh, when the man asks you to build a house or tells you to build a house on Shabbos. If you don't die, that is in itself sanctifying God's name because God gave you reasonable commandments. God is not unreasonable. For example, there are people who interpret that the absorption or this, the eating of blood is prohibited and therefore you're not allowed to ingest blood in any way, refuse to take blood transfusions in order to save their lives. And this obviously is a perversion of the understanding of this, that Torah prohibits only the eating of blood. Uh, and furthermore, even if you had to eat blood in order to survive, you're allowed to eat blood in order to survive because you're allowed to violate any of the consumption laws, any of the laws of, of eating in order to save a life. Uh, you're just not allowed to do things sexually to save your life. And you're not allowed to kill a person in order to save your life. You're not allowed to worship idols in order to save your life um, and so on. But in general, uh, any any kind of the violations of eating and, and drinking, absorption uh, is permitted to save a life under all circumstances. So uh, the, the only time you're not allowed to eat something that's a, a violation is if you ate idolatry. If you, if by eating from a tree that was worshiped by the, by the, uh, by the Gentiles, if you eat from that tree, um, they are going to say that the tree, the, the idol of that tree, saved you. You're not allowed to eat that. You're not allowed to eat the fruits of a, 
of an Asheva. Uh, because if they worship the Asheva, if they only use the Asheva for shade, that's a different story. But if the Asheva is designated for idolatry and is offered as the fruits are offered for the idolatry only, then, then that would be prohibited to use because that's part of the, uh, the, the that which is sacrificed to idolatry and that is prohibited in those circumstances. So that's a different story. So those are the only the only ex uh, um, the only things that are outside of that. The uh, those who don't believe that you're allowed to take a blood transfusion are causing the death of many innocent pe people. They're misinterpreting the law, and they have not they don't have a right for, in their interpretation of the law. The law was given to the Jews on signing. They they alone know what the law is supposed to be. That being said, you have to conclude that not dying by taking a blood transfusion is sanctifying God's name. By dying, that's saying that God would rather you die than take blood, a pint of blood or a liter of blood that's necessary to save your life in your veins. And that doesn't make any sense at all. You're desecrating God's name by doing that, You're not sanctifying God's name, You're not showing how pious you are, you're showing how stupid you are or how stupid your laws are. You're giving God a black eye. The question is, well, what about the other laws, the other times when you're not allowed to violate the laws and, and you're supposed to uh, sacrifice your life? What about that? Um, doesn't that look bad to God, that God would rather you die than... Well, you should know that the, the, the Muslims do that. The Muslims will say that they believe in another God, that Muslims will say anything or do anything in order to maintain their lives. Um, but is this really a, a um, sanctification of God's name? And the answer is obviously that there are things that we stand for that should never be done. They should never be done because giving into those things destroys the entire fabric upon which life is, is built. Um, there are times when you have to stand up and allow yourself to be killed, not to violate principles that are universal, that are accepted, that they, they are inviolable. For example, killing someone to save your life, how is that, how is you killing someone sanctifying God's name? How do you say, well, I didn't, I, I killed him in order to save my life and that really shows how good God is. What? You went ahead to save your life by killing somebody else. You saved yourself by taking somebody else's life. Why is your life better than the other person's life? Why would God want you to kill that other person? In this case, violating the law obviously doesn't give God a good uh, a good reputation. It gives God a black eye that God will allow you to kill somebody else just for your self-preservation. There are things that we don't do under any circumstances. We don't kill people under any circumstances. The same thing is true about changing religions or uttering that, that we are violating the rules against idolatry. We are Jews. We believe in the universal God who created everything that gave us the Torah. That's what we believe in. That's our creed. That's our belief. And we are God's chosen people. And we accept to promote this in the world under all circumstances, even at the expense of our lives. That sanctifies God's name. That's saying that we represent something that is universal, that's greater than our personal self, and we are not willing to violate that. Because if we do, we, we're saying that we have a price. Our ideology has a price. If you pay the price, we're willing to give up our ideology. That's not sanctifying God's name. So therefore, by not violating and allowing us to be killed, 
we sanctify God's name because certain things are worth dying for. Just as everybody appreciates the soldiers who gave their lives in the war for the country. We understand that. There are certain things that are <coughs> that are greater than the life of the individual. That's the survival of the country and the survival of the country's ideals. And the same thing is true for the individual giving up his life for the sake of God. There are certain things that are greater than the individual. That is the greatness of God's name, that we we act as the ambassadors of God's name and we're willing to sacrifice for that. So that, in a nutshell, is the reason why certain things we are obligated to allow ourselves to be killed and certain things we're not. You're not allowed to go ahead and cause your death over a small matter. Now, there is an exception for this. The exception for this is if you have a great person. A person is very, very pious and is known for his piety. And such a person, getting that person to violate God's law in any way would be considered uh, would be considered a, a, a desecration of God's name. If the person known for his holiness would suddenly violate the Shabbos or the, or the, or the uh, Kashrus and so on um, because they were sick or because they were being forced to, uh, that, um, that would desecrate God's name, saying that somebody who represents the entire Torah would be willing to violate the Torah for their own self selfish reasons, that is not sanctifying God's name. On the contrary, the person who is very pious and represents the entire body of the Torah, willing to, who's willing to, to do anything not to violate the Torah, that person will sanctify God's name because of the position that that person has. That's the opinion of the Ran. And that's the explanation as to why the Rebbe was willing to put his life in danger in order to get a, a kosher rule of an esrig from southern France or Vichy France. He left Paris for three days uh, during after Yom Kippur because he saw that there was no kosher rule of an esrig and brought back a kosher rule of an esrig, despite the fact that his life was in danger because a person of the status of the Rebbe who was a known chosid and a pious person, the son-in-law of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, his self-sacrifice for a mitzvah is an example for us to follow. And that is, in a nutshell, don't make yourself greater than you are, but in certain circumstances we have to stand up and say, we're not going there, because we represent goodness, we represent truth, we represent the God of the world, and we're not, allow we're not allowed to, and we're not going to violate certain basic premises because it's, of its difficulty. For those who went ahead and um, accepted the responsibility of keeping the Sabbath, even though it was very difficult in this country, were successful. Ultimately, were successful and were successful in establishing uh, generations of Jews who follow the Torah. And, make, and today it's a lot easier for them to follow the Torah. They, they broke, the, broke through and they broke the ground for that. And they suffered for it. But on their backs we have the entire Orthodox community in the United States that is successful and becoming even more successful as we speak in every in every day and every year, uh, businessmen, people, uh, entrepreneurs, and new activities, new insights, new, uh, new inventions, new types of everything, innovations, even without going to a college. Uh, my friend Ben Forte has written more books on, on software than any person I know, maybe any person on the planet, uh, never went to college, and uh, extremely successful. So. You can be successful as an Orthodox Jew today because people refuse to violate the Sabbath, even though that would make their lives very difficult because 
if you didn't work on the Sabbath, you didn't have food. So they opened businesses, opened shops, and didn't violate the Shabbos. And God made them successful. And on their backs, we have the Orthodox community flourishing. And that is sanctifying God's name. Those who keep Shabbos and kept Shabbos and continue to keep Shabbos, despite the difficulties, are sanctifying God's name in Shabbos.